गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू ऑल फोर्स ई लर्निंग क्लासेस दिस इज अजी सब्जेक्ट चाप्टर द केमिकल कंट्रोल एंड कोऑर्डिनेशन एज वेल एज इंटीग्रेशन एंड द सेशन नंबर फोर टॉपिक पिटरी ग्लैंड एंड इट्स डिजॉर्डर्स सो पिटरी ग्लैंड एडिनो हाइपोफाइसिस वी हैव डिस्कसड इन द प्रीवियस क्लास दैट इज the parts anterior parts intermedia together what name it to be the anterior pituitary or adeno hypophysis so from parts anterior the proteinoid hormones released are the somatotropic hormone or growth hormone adenocorticotropic hormone follicular stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone luteotropic hormone thyroid stimulating hormone is what uh, the list of the proteinoid hormones we have discussed and uh, the pars intermedia or intermediate lobe pars intermedia is also named to be the intermediate lobe intermediate lobe this intermediate lobe is it is a uh, well developed in the lower vertebrates like amphibians whereas in the case of the human beings uh, it is atrophied it is disintegrated and it is uh, become an integral part of the pars anterior or uh, the pars distalis however this uh, pituitary the pars intermedia secretes a hormone name it to be the melanocytic uh, stimulating hormone msh it is also named to be the intermedin it is also named to be the intermedin melanocytic stimulating hormone or uh, the intermedin generally this melanocytic stimulating hormone is uh, the hormone in the case of the amphibians it stimulates the melanocytes of the skin nothing but the pigmented cells of the skin so skin uh, is stimulated such that uh, it play a role in the stimulation of the pigmented cells name it to be the melanocytes thereby the melanophores are spread and darkening of the skin takes place darkening or else the darkening uh, darkening of uh, the skin takes place that is uh, the skin pigmentation is because of uh, the melanocytic stimulating hormone or intermedin the case with uh, this msh because of uh, the msh itself amphibians do exhibit uh, protective coloration protective uh, coloration protective coloration we know very well that is uh, the camouflage camouflage is exhibited by the frog that is it is capable of uh, changing its color according to the environment which is influenced by the melanocytic stimulating hormone so this is how it is uh, the spreading the pigmented cells thereby the darkening of the skin takes place which is well developed in the case of uh, the lower vertebrates called amphibians whereas in the case of the human beings uh, in the case of the human beings it is atrophied or disintegrated however it is having uh, not a significant role but uh, a minor role it is with uh, it is not uh, significantly seen but however it is having a, a small extent of role that is nothing but uh, this melanocytic stimulating hormone is for uh, the darkening of uh, the hair uh, shaft that is the color to the hair is uh, what because of the msh which is uh, the negligible amount right so that's what uh, the msh or intermedin is all about in the case of the human being this is uh, said to be the darkening of uh, the hair by depositing uh, depositing the pigments in the hair shaft hair follicle this is how the hair gets the darken 
accept this it is not a nothing other function that's the reason why it is treated as insignificant role generally the melanocytic stimulating hormone playing role in a the other member in a spreading of the melanocytes that's what uh, it spread the pigments so darkening of the skin takes place whereas melatonin is a hormone which is uh, concentrates the pigments that is for suppose uh, if i draw a, di a diagram here this is uh, the function of uh, the melanocytic stimulating hormone it spread the melanophores this is how the darkening occurs but uh, one hormone released from the melato uh, pineal gland is said to be the melatonin it condenses that is it is uh, condensing the melanocytes or pigments thereby it uh, causes the accumulation of the melanophores at one place this is condensing this is spreading is it that one again is the another yes that's what a uh, msh and uh, the melatonin or msh and uh, melatonin are antagonistic with each other this is the point to remember that is uh, the opposite functions and one more point to remember this uh, melanocytic stimulating hormone is uh, stimulated by releasing hormone and inhibitory hormone of the hypothalamus we have seen from uh, the hypothalamus the neurosecretory cells uh, secretes uh, the nine hormones melanocytic stimulating releasing hormone and melanocytic inhibiting hormone Gro uh, growth uh, releasing hormone growth inhibitory prolactin inhibi releasing hormone prolactin inhibiting next uh, the thyrotropin hormone and uh, corticotropin releasing hormone and uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone these are the nine hormones so one of that uh, is the melanocytic uh, stimulating releasing hormone stimulate the release of the msh and melanocytic uh, inhibiting hormone inhibits this so as per uh, this knowledge it is said uh, its uh, secretion is also regulated by hypothalamus that is the reason why we have discussed that mm, pituitary gland however it is the master gland but uh, the hypothalamus is treated to be the master gland controlling center so msh and uh, melatonin are antagonistic to each other which are functioning the uh, same uh, function but opposite uh, it is uh, their role in one target but opposite function like insulin and glucagon like gastrin and enterogastrin that's what uh, msh and melatonin are antagonistic this is the description uh, related to that of uh, that of the pars intermedia or uh, the intermediate lobe let's move on to the next one is named to be the pars uh, nervosa pars nervosa pars nervosa is nothing but uh, the posterior uh, region of the pituitary it is none other than the neurohypophysis it is also said to be the neurohypophysis neurohypophysis pars nervosa in fact uh, it is a non secretory non synthesizing it is a non secretory what do you mean by non secretory non secretory in the sense uh, it does not this neurohypophysis do not synthesize the hormones then uh, how about the adh or vasopressin and uh, the oxytocin in fact uh, let me clear you neurohypophysis hormones are in fact synthesized in the hypothalamus we have discussed uh, that uh, hypothalamus is uh, synthesizing the hormones in the hypothalamus uh, there are uh, the nucleus or neurosecretory cells there are neurosecretory cells name it to be the supra optic nucleus supra optic uh, nucleus and the 
paraventricular nucleus paraventricular nucleus these are the nucleus reference to nucleus mean the group of the cell bodies in the central nervous system are neurosecretory cells that is the supraoptic nucleus paraventricular nucleus are the nucleus neurosecretory cells of the hypothalamus which secretes uh, the two hormones name it to be the peptide hormone so far we have discussed in the case of uh, adenos uh, adenohypophysis is uh, the proteinoid hormone but here peptide hormone the hormones that are with 3 to 49 number of amino acids the list of the hormone is a adh antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin and the second one is the oxytocin 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 is also named to be the pitocin pitocin another name we give it to it is named to be the pitocin or uh, o t o t oxytocin pitocin other another term and even it is said to be the milk let down hormone birth hormone that is the detail we see regarding oxytocin so the two hormone peptide are synthesized in the supraoptic nucleus and the paraventricular nucleus. They are secreted from the paraventricular nucleus, supraoptic nucleus, and the axons from this originate there at the hypothalamus are directly innervated into the neurohypophysis. And these group of nerve fibers is named to be the tracts which is named to be the hypothalamo hypophysial tract that is these group of nerve fibers in the hypothalamus are start there and end in the neurohypophysis this is how the hypothalamus is uh, the closely associated with that of the nervous system and endocrine system so this is how directly the neurohypophysis is influenced by the hypothalamic hormones that is none other than the adh vasopressin oxytocin or pitocin these are synthesized in the hypothalamus and via the hypothalamo hypophysial tract reach the neurohypophysis or pars nervosa they are stored for some time and are released into the blood and show their uh, biological effect now it is uh, clear that uh, the pars nervosa neurohypophysis is non secretory in fact these two hormones are not synthesized in it but are synthesized in the hypothalamus and are brought into the neurohypophysis now let's discuss the function of these two hormones adhr vasopressin is a peptide hormone whose influence is uh, on uh, the DCT distal convoluted tubule and uh, the collecting duct CD and the collecting duct distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct we know very well that is these are the two regions where water reabsorption is influenced by regulated and conditional reabsorption of water is uh, referred to be facultative reabsorption facultative reabsorption facultative reabsorption it is uh, treated uh, as a facultative reabsorption absorption there are two types of the reabsorptions one the obligatory reabsorption non-conditional unconditional unregulated manner water reabsorption is a uh, obligatory reabsorption which is taking place at pct and all loop of henley descending limb whereas this is a facultative why it is influenced by adh vasopressin which means adh or vasopressin is a peptide hormone responsible for water retention water reabsorption and electrolytes water reabsorption and uh, electrolytes uh, reabsorption electrolytes reabsorption reabsorption at uh, the dct and the collecting duct thereby 
anti the vasopressin besides these two it is also having one role that is uh, it is showing uh, the constrictor effect on blood vessel constrictor uh, effect uh, on blood vessel constrictor effect on uh, the blood vessel so this is how we see it shows it increases the blood pressure so anti diuretic hormone that is the reason why it got the same term that is vasopressin is a hormone which is responsible for water reabsorption and electrolytes thereby it prevents the loss of the water loss of the water is named to be the diuresis so as it prevents the diuresis so it is named to be the anti diuretic hormone and it is showing the constrictor effect on the blood vessels when constrictor effect is there it increases the blood pressure that is what uh, we do discuss regarding the adh vasopressin generally the diuretics uh, during the excretion we have seen tea coffee alcohol tea coffee alcohol affect the secretion of tea coffee alcohol uh, affect the secretion of the adh that's the reason why these are what uh, name it to be the diuretics which means this tea coffee alcohol inhibit the secretion of adh point to remember we discussed that hypothalamus what respond to the receptors that is when dehydration takes place immediately the osmo receptors on and that stimulate the hypothalamus to secrete the adh so when we take the tea coffee and alcohol excessively the aid, the hypothalamus uh, what influenced uh, and adh or vasopressin is failed to secrete or synthesize when these are failed to secrete or synthesize why alcohol is affecting the brain hypothalamus is the part of the brain so adh secretion become reduced so naturally the reabsorption of water does not takes place so diuresis what takes place that's what uh, the tea coffee alcohol are said to be the diuretics and uh, adh is excessively secreted uh, in uh, certain animals uh, named it to be particularly in a zero five check uh, the fauna none other than camel make a note the camel as well as kangaroo rat kangaroo rat dipodimus kangaroo rat is uh, these two are the desert uh, animals kangaroo rat dipodimus dipodimus these two are the members in which uh, the adh secretion is excessively taking place that's what the story about the adh next come to the oxytocin or pitocin the another name for uh, the oxytocin is pitocin the oxytocin is influencing it is a peptide hormone oxytocin shows effect on uh, smooth muscles of smooth muscles of the uterus smooth muscles of uh, uterus and it also causes uh, the contractions uh, of the smooth muscles of the uterus that's the reason why childbirth is taking place during the pregnancy time during the parturition child birth child delivery the oxytocin is secreted more such that uh, it shows the rapid contractions in the uterine wall so that childbirth takes place besides that uh, it also induces the ejection of milk ejection of milk ejection of milk what do you mean by ejection of milk that is we have discussed the luteotropic hormone or lactogenic hormone it is for synthesis and the sustaining of the milk that is the prolactin is a hormone which uh, grow, which play role in the growth of the mammary glands of the breast and stimulate the secretion sustaining of the milk 
so they grow such that the milk production is more whereas after the child birth what is the feeding is nothing but the milk so ejection of milk is done by oxytocin so points to remember if i ask you a question the hormones which are for uh, milk secretion and the milk ejection respectively milk secretion is a lithotropic hormone and the milk ejection is oxytocin remind you this and uh, this is the reason why the oxytocin is uh, said to be the milk let down uh, milk uh, let down milk let down hormone and uh, as it is uh, causing the stronger uterine contractions by contracting the smooth muscles of the uterus it play role in a parturition and child birth so it is named to be the birth hormone it is also said to be the birth hormone clear so this is the detail regarding the oxytocin and the pitocin right so that is all about uh, the pars nervosa and the neurohypophysis with this the end uh, the pituitary gland and their hormones now let's move on to the disorders the disorders of uh, the pituitary gland <clears throat> three disorders pituitary disorders the growth hormone we have discussed the growth hormone is also named to be the somatotropic hormone and this is the hormone which play vital role in a, it plays vital role in a protein anabolism and this is responsible for cell differentiation and uh, uh, the uh, elongation of the epiphyseal plate so that uh, the bone uh, and the muscles grow that's how it is the growth hormone if this growth hormone uh, if it is secreted low it is said to be the hypopituitarism if it is secreted uh, excessively hyper secretion so now we'll go for the hypo secretion of the growth hormone hypo secretion hypo secretion of the growth hormone results in uh, the two conditions we treat we consider one is name it to be the one is uh, the dwarfism 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 and uh, acromesia acromesia acromicria it is said to be the acromicria and even one more is said to be the simmons disease simmons disease simmons simmons disease this is very very important hypo secretion means lower secretion generally these are not considered to be diseases why these are the hormonal disorders where metabolism is uh, what the deviated impaired so the lower secretion of the growth hormone in uh, the children results in a condition name it to be the dwarfism that is what is the role played by the growth hormone elongation of the bones height of the body is what we see but here due to the lower secretion of the growth hormone the body do not grow that is uh, the limbs are short four limbs and hand limb the uh, neck and uh, the chest are what uh, clubbed almost all there is no difference between the head and chest but uh, the one thing uh, to be considered that uh, the however the dwarfism dwarfs are short body and uh, which are also named to be the midgets but sexually and uh, mentally they are normal what do you mean by this 
you mean to say however they are the dwarf they are capable of producing their progeny so sexually and mentally they are a normal condition it is not going to be affecting the mental condition and the sexual condition of the individual right next uh, the acromicria it is uh, what seen uh, this is lower secretion and the younger uh, or uh, before the pu puberty after uh, the puberty it is uh, what results in acromicria and uh, the same thing physically they are very short limbs do not grow next uh, simmons disease hyposecretion of the growth hormone results in uh, premature aging uh, premature aging simmons uh, disease is uh, said to be the deficiency of the growth hormone premature aging which means uh, and the, at the early stage the loss of the hair skin uh, pigmentation decreases and uh, they appear to be old people that is premature early aging is a uh, what the symptom of simmons disease this is hyposecretion let us discuss the hypersecretion 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 of hypersecretion of the growth hormone hyper secretion of a growth hormone results in a gigantism or gigantism gigantism or gigantism and uh, the second one is named to be the acromegaly 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 let me explain you gigantism that is some of the children uh, at the tender age before uh, the 10th standard they grow faster so here also we have seen before puberty dwarfism after puberty acromicria the same way before puberty some children attain a large size why due to the hyper secretion of the growth hormone at the 8th standard 9th standard they may attain the 6 feet of size length that is because of the hyper secretion of the growth hormone the limbs are longer four limbs and a hind limb but uh, one point to remember in a gigantism uh, the body parts are in a proportionate condi condition they do not look, look like a gorilla or else the abnormal there is a proportionate of the body parts that is a uh, gigantism whereas acromegaly if we observe acromegaly is said to be the disproportionate 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 gigantism disproportionate gigantism what do you mean by this that is i mean to say the body is gorilla like gorilla like body gorilla like disproportionate body parts that is the lips are swollen protrusible the large nose next uh, protruded eyelids and uh, the head is like a gorilla and uh, the limbs are even longer they are longer such that they cross the feet they cross what is called uh, the knee knee joints they cross and the fingers the fingers appear to be swollen like uh, knobs adhesive swollen uh, parts it is this is all appear to be the disproportionate gigantism and they show abnormalities and one point to remember here the growth hormone is secreted after puberty even now the question that confronts our mind is if the growth hormone secreted even after the puberty is that elongation of the bones takes place one point to remember that after puberty after 18 years 21 years the limbs do not grow why 
limbs that is the long bones contain epiphyseal plate in which by growth hormone the division takes place such that the epiphyseal plate is elongated after the certain time epiphyseal line is formed so growth of the long bone is ceased that's for sure then how does the excessive growth hormone after puberty influencing here that is what the important point to remember as the growth hormone is go on secreting its function is to growth so the elongation of the bone does not takes place but uh, the tissues surrounding the bone are what excessively grow this is how the swollen lips protrusible lips large nose and uh, the ends of the digits are uh, swollen bulged so the tissues lining the long bones are swell such that it shows the disproportionate condition but not uh, the bones do not grow throughout the life after puberty it is cessation epiphyseal line is formed that's all but uh, the tissues epiphysis the swollen end of a long bone is a connective tissue which grows and shows the disproportionate condition that is what name it to be the acromegaly which is a gorilla like body limbs are even cross the feet that's what the acromegaly and uh, one one more is there that is uh, the diabetes insipidus the hyposecretion of hyposecretion hyposecretion of the hormone adh is one more disorder need to be discussed that results in the diapedis diapedis insipidus diapedis insipidus diapedis insipidus generally adh role is to retain the water and constrict the blood vessels so water reabsorption reabsor takes place blood volume increase but blood pressure increases but due to deficiency of uh, or lower secretion of adh the water reabsorption does not takes place but else uh, the water uh, excessively lost we discussed that uh, 1.8 liters of the urine was daily excreted by a human being but here 20 liters of uh, the water is excreted why as there is a deficiency of adh so water reabsorption does not takes place so diluted urine uh, excess amount of the water lost through the urine uh, which is diabetes insipidus insipidus in the sense tasteless as uh, the more water lost uh, so it is diluted tasteless and uh, the conditions are low bp thirsty or the condition seen that's what diabetes sins so the disorders of the pituitary dwarfism acromicria cements hyposecretion and uh, hyposecretion of growth hormone or somatotropic hypersecretion of growth hormone Zyg gigantism before puberty and after puberty acromegaly which is, which is a disproportionate gigantism and the hyposecretion of adh diabetes insipidus Thank you.